In the previous video, we learned that diffusion is the movement of a specific substrate particle from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. This occurs naturally without any energy because if substrate particles were to remain in the same location, they would bump into each other like this and eventually push each other away so that the majority of particles would move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration so that the particles maximize the distance between each other. However, there are many situations in your cells and throughout the body where the body wants to move substrate particles in the opposite direction from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. This is said to be moving substances against the concentration gradient, meaning in the opposite direction as the way that they would normally travel. Now, obviously, diffusion cannot be used to do this because diffusion takes place in the opposite direction. Therefore, this process of going against the concentration gradient is what we call active transport. The only two similarities that active transport shares with the diffusion counterpart is the fact that active transport requires a concentration gradient to be present. That being that active transport requires there to be a difference in concentration between two sides, usually outside a cell and inside the cell. However, the other requirement for active transport is actually tipped off by the presence of the word active. Whenever there is a biological process that is defined as active, we say that that process has an energetic requirement, meaning it requires an energy input in order for this process to function. And whenever we think of energy in biology, we should always think of adenosine triphosphate, ATP. In terms of the actual mechanism of active transport, however, we see a little bit of a similarity to diffusion. So if we consider the structure of various substrate-specific proteins, such as enzymes, but also carrier proteins and channel proteins, we can see that active transport proteins have the same substrate specificity. So that means that a specific substrate that we want to move from a low concentration to a high concentration can only go through a specific active transport carrier protein. One example of these are ion pumps or uh, ion carrier proteins. So for example, if we wanted to move sodium ions from a low concentration and pump them into an area of high concentration, these sodium ions would have to fit into the active site of a carrier protein and then the conformational change of that carrier protein would move the sodium ion into the cell. This means that active transport proteins can only transport a single type of substrate, meaning that no other ion that can fit or can fit into a carrier protein specifically intended for sodium. However, the only difference in the function of active transport proteins is the need for ATP, meaning the, con the conformational change that shifts the ion from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell against the concentration gradient will only happen as long as there is an energy source, which is why most of the time ATP actually needs to react with this transport protein, breaking off one of its phosphates and becoming ADP in order to supply this carrier protein with the energy needed to push these ions against the concentration gradient. Now, not every carrier protein transports ions. Many carrier proteins specifically transport types of nutrients like carbohydrates or amino acids or even larger substances potentially. Now, one analogy to help us understand why active transport needs to be an energy requiring process is something that anybody has ridden a bike can attest to. Now, if you think of the process of pumping bike tires, think about this question here. 
as air is pumped into bike tires, what happens to the concentration of air inside of your tires? Well, as you pump air into your bike tires, the concentration of air is going to increase because obviously we are pumping more air into the tires and therefore you are increasing the concentration of air inside of the tires. Now, eventually your tires are going to get full, but when you pull the valve of the pump off of your tire, the opening of the tire is temporarily open. Now, does the air in your full tire stay in the tire until you close this valve? Well, obviously no. The air is going to go outside the tire. You're going to have a leak until you close the valve on the tire. Therefore, when you pump your tires, you are creating an area of high concentration inside of your tires compared to the lower concentration of air or lower pressure of air outside of your tires. Therefore, if you ask the question, does air naturally move from the atmosphere into your tires when they are full? The answer is obviously no. This is why when you pull the pump off of your tire, you need to close this valve very, very quickly so that the high concentration of air in your tires doesn't automatically escape. Now, if you want to get air from a lower concentration into your tires at a higher concentration, we need to actually pump air from the atmosphere into your tires, meaning that we need to apply energy in order to get air from the atmosphere to flow into an area of higher concentration inside of the tires. And for this reason, in addition to the active transport process of moving ions or nutrients from a low concentration to high concentration, pumping your bike tires is also a form of active transport, the only difference being the energy source. For active transport across a cell membrane, the energy source is adenosine triphosphate, but for pumping your tires, the energy source comes from manual power of using an air pump to pump air from a lower concentration in the atmosphere into your bike tires. Now that you have at least a surface level understanding of active transport and the difference with diffusion, see if you can take a look at this case study and answer questions about how the digestive system absorbs nutrients and transports those nutrients into the bloodstream so that your blood can transport all of the nutrients that it needs to the cells to which they are needed.